Welcome to worship. We are now in the, the season of Epiphany. In fact, we will celebrate Epiphany today at, at our service. And so as we uh, uh, come together to worship, let us uh, first of all begin by singing our first hymn. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, O oh my soul, worship His holy name. Sing like never before, O oh my soul, I worship Your holy name. The sun comes up. call upon our God. Arise, shine. God's light has come to reveal the way in this new year. Arise, shine. The glory of the Lord has risen upon us. Arise, shine. God's light penetrates the darkness that covers the world. Arise, shine. Nations shall come to God's light and kings to the brightness of God's dawn. Arise, shine, for the glory of the Lord has risen upon us. 
Let us now confess our sins. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins to God our Father imploring him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. I said, I will confess my transgressions to the Lord, and you forgave the iniquity of my sin. O oh, almighty God, merciful Father, I, a poor miserable sinner, confess to you all my sins and iniquities, with which I have ever offended you, and justly deserve your punishment now and forever. But I am heartily sorry for them, and I sincerely repent of them, and I pray you of your boundless mercy, and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor sinful being. Well, upon this your confession, I as a called and ordained servant of the word announce the grace of God unto you, and in the stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We sing the Kyrie.
The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Eternal God, we worship you for your patient, all-embracing love. We thank you above from showing, for showing mercy to the people of the earth by sending your Son as a light amid the darkness of their sin. Indeed, you announced his birth not only to all nations, but to the whole universe by the light of a special star. Help us take joy in your love and live our faith openly before the whole world. Amen. We also come before God, or we also come together hearing from the Lutheran Confessions. Today we, we hear from the Augsburg Confession concerning distinctions of food. It has been a general conviction, not only of the people, but also of those who teach in the churches, that distinction of food and similar human traditions are useful works for meriting grace. In the first place, it has obscured the teaching concerning grace and the righteousness of faith, which is a chief part of the gospel and which ought to be present and prominent in the church. In the second place, these traditions obscured the precepts of God because traditions were preferred far more than the precepts of God. In the third place, traditions brought great dangers to conscience because it was impossible to keep them all, and yet people judged these observances to be necessary acts of worship. Meanwhile, they never heard the consolation that comes from the righteousness of faith. This is from the Lutheran Confessions. Let us also confess our Christian faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We hear from God's word. The first reading is taken from the book of Isaiah, chapter 60, beginning at verse 1. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. For behold, darkness shall cover the earth, and thick darkness the peoples. But the Lord will rise upon you, and his glory will be seen upon you. And nations shall come to your light, and kings to the brightness of your rising. Lift up your eyes all around and see. They all gather together, they come to you. Your sons shall come from afar, and your daughters shall be carried on the hip. Then you shall see and be radiant. Your heart shall thrill and exult, because the abundance of the sea shall be turned to you. The wealth of the nation shall come to you. A multitude of camels shall cover you. The young camels of Midian and Ephah, all those from Sheba shall come. They shall bring gold and frankincense, and shall bring good news, the praises of the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The second reading is taken from the book of Ephesians, chapter 3, beginning at verse 1. For this reason, I, Paul, a prisoner of Christ Jesus, on behalf of you Gentiles, assuming that you have heard of the stewardship of God's grace that was given to me for you, how the mystery was made known to me by revelation, as I have written briefly. When you read this, you can perceive my insight into the mystery of Christ, which was not made known to the sons of men in other generations, as it has now been revealed to his holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit. This mystery is that the Gentiles are fellow heirs, members of the same body, and partakers of the promise in Christ Jesus through the gospel. Of this gospel, I was made a minister according to the gift of God's grace, which was given me by the working of his power. To me, though, I am the very least of all the saints, this grace was given to preach to the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Christ and to bring to light for everyone what is the plan of the mystery hidden for ages in God, who created all things 
so that through the church the manifold wisdom of God might now be made known to the rulers and authorities in the heavenly places. This was according to the eternal purpose that he has realized in Christ Jesus our Lord, in whom we have boldness and access with confidence through our faith in him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The gospel reading is taken from the book of Matthew, chapter 2, beginning at verse 1. Now after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod the king, behold, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he who has been born king of the Jews? For we saw his star when it rose, and have come to worship him. When Herod the king heard this, he was troubled, and all Jerusalem with him. And assembling all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Christ was to be born. They told him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for so it is written by the prophet. And you, O Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, and by no means least among the rulers of Judah, for whom you shall come a ruler, who will shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod summoned the wise men secretly, and ascertained from them what time the star had appeared. And he sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search diligently for the child. And when you have found him, bring me word that I too may come and worship him. After listening to the king, they went on their way. And behold, the star that they had seen when it rose went before them until it came to rest over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they rejoiced exceedingly with great joy. And going into the house, they saw the child with Mary his mother, and they fell down and worshipped him. Then, opening their treasures, they offered him gifts gold and frankincense and myrrh. And being warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they departed to their own country by another way. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Good morning and happy Epiphany. Epiphany is the day that we celebrate after Christmas when the wise men follow the star to find baby Jesus. I looked around in the office at the nativity sets that I have. I have nativity sets from different places around the world where people show Jesus and his family wearing the costumes from their own countries. I love it because it's a representation of how God is with us, Emmanuel, God with us. And as I was looking around at them, I noticed that every single one that I have here in the office has a star or wise men. So this one is from Peru, and you can see the wise men here. And this one has a star and the wise men. This one is from Guam. There are the wise men. And this one is from Kenya. And look, there's a big star behind the Holy Family. This is a special day where we remember how God gave this message about baby Jesus being born to people from far away because he wanted the whole world to hear about his message of love, his light to the world. And so he shared that message with them with a star that they could follow the light of that star to the light of baby Jesus. And he had come to the world to bring us his light, his light of love and his presence here on earth to show that he is God with us. And that is what the wise men found when they found Jesus there in Bethlehem. God, thank you for sending us your son. Thank you for sending the star so that the wise men could follow it to Bethlehem and could find Jesus as your promised love and light to the world. Thank you, God, for sending that love into the world through Jesus. Amen. Far, field and far.
The text for the sermon today comes from the gospel reading from Matthew chapter 2, verses 1 and 2, where I read again. Now, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea, in the days of Herod the king, behold, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he who has been born king of the Jews? For we saw his star when it rose and have come to worship him. This is our text. The story of the Magi, uh, though very familiar even to non-Christians, is one that holds some mystery. Were they kings? Probably not. That notion of we three kings uh, comes from Isaiah 60, verse 3, where, where it says, And nations shall come to your light, and the kings to the brightness of your rising. Were there three of them? Don't know. Could have been more. Some traditions say there were 12 of them. Well, why three? Well, the three gifts, gold for a king, frankincense, the incense uh, for worship, and myrrh, the oil to prepare a body when it's dead. Some have even suggested they had names. There is an Arabian, uh, Armenian tradition identified the Magi at Bethlehem as Balthasar of Arabia, Melchor of Persia, and Gaspar of India. 
Well, for me, the real question is, why did they come? I ask this, even though Matthew seems to tell us when he says, we saw his star in the east and have come to worship him. But were they really that wise to understand God's plan? Or were they just wealthy and that they, and they could afford to chase after every star? Or were they just willing? Well, I've heard it. Uh, I've had a hard time believing that these, these men were wise enough to know the type of history that they were involved in. I say this because of some evidence. First of all, they went to Jerusalem and not to Bethlehem, even though scripture had declared the birthplace would be Bethlehem. And they didn't really see through Herod, did they? It took a dream before they could see Herod's deception. Paul says in 1 Corinthians 1, verses 20 and 21, where is the wise man? Where is the scholar? Where is the philosopher of this age? Has not God made the foolish the wisdom of the world? For since in the wisdom of God, the world through the wisdom did not know him, God pleased, was pleased through the foolishness of what was preached to save those who believe. No, these men cannot be credited with their wisdom. The word magi usually brings the image of wealthy kings who came, to, came out of obligation to worship this future king. You almost get the idea that they were hedging their bets and making sure that this king would be friendly to them. This view also car carries a flaw. They would have had to understand what was happening. I can't believe that anyone could have figured out what really was happening but through the birth of Jesus. Not even the Virgin Mary, who we are told pondered all of these things. Now, Epiphany is not about wise people who can figure out their faith. Epiphany is about people who humble themselves to do God's will. This is my understanding of the reason why these magi came. God used these foreigners to announce the, uh, that the good news that the angels proclaimed to the shepherds was for all people, for Jews and Gentiles. Our epistle reading for today says this, the mystery is that through the gospel of the Gentiles, our, our heirs together with Israel, members together of one body, and sharers together in the promise in Jesus Christ. The focus, then, is not on the messengers, the magi, but on the message. The magi were just the first to come to know the gospel through the power of the Holy Spirit. You and I have come to faith not because we were so wise to understand it, but because the Holy Spirit has given us that faith. Martin Luther said in the, in the small catechism, I believe that I cannot by my own reason or strength believe in Jesus Christ, my, my Lord, or come to him. Now, the season of Epiphany is a season we use to talk about evangelism. It is a lesson from today that teaches us that we do not have to teach people to be wise enough to believe or follow Jesus. Instead, we simply are called to share our faith with others. This is what Peter advised us in 1 Peter 3, verse 15. Always being prepared to make a defense to anyone who asks you for the reason, for the hope that is in you. Yet do it with gentleness and respect. 
Even our Old Testament reading gives us reason to understand our call in this way. In Isaiah 60, Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. For behold, darkness shall cover the earth, and thick darkness the peoples. But the Lord will arise upon you, and his glory will be seen upon you. This is the light that the world needs. This is the light that you are called upon to share. This is the light which saves. Amen. Now the peace of God which surpasses all human understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. Let us go to God in prayer. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Eternal God, we worship you for your patient, all-embracing love. We thank you above for showing mercy to the people of the earth by sending your Son as a light amid the darkness of their sin. Indeed, you announced his birth not only to all nations, but to the whole universe by the light of a special star. Help us to take joy in your love and to live our faith openly before the whole world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the church. Lord of the church, bless your church. Bless it with the spirit to believe that its members might see with eyes of faith. Bless it with the power to act that your people might work to change the world. Bless it with the will to speak that we might spread the glorious gospel. And bless your people here on earth with the powerful knowledge that the saints above have gone before us. For your church is the only institution with active membership on both sides of the grave. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the call process. God, we desire a new pastor to be among us, to lead us and to walk with us. Direct us as we wait. Bless all who serve in this congregation, especially those who have the responsibility to lead us in the call process. Bless us, Lord Jesus. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our country and our leaders. God above all, great ruler of all, work in the hearts and minds of our na national and state leaders so that they may achieve what is best for all citizens and guide the actions of all who make policies and control legislation so that their efforts will bring solutions to problems and resolution to conflict. Always keep them aware of the power they have to make change for the better according to your will. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all those who protect us. Gracious Lord, be with all who serve our country by keeping us safe. We pray for protection on all police officers, firemen, those in the military and those in homeland defense, and those in the medical fields. Continue to bless them and their families as they serve us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those who are ill and hurting. Lord Jesus Christ, you came to bear our sickness and our infirmities. Look with mercy upon those for whom we pray. We pray for those who are healing from COVID. Laura and Doug Sykes, Suzanne and Byron Irvin, Joan and Bill Irvin, Star Jorgensen, Jay Giles, Noah Giles. Pray, we pray for those who are healing from cancer, for Paul Anderson, George Mate, Geraldine Meyerman, Sharon Hunter, Marty Williams, Emily Franks, Linda Mir Rosier, Marcelia Gemello, Betty Pickett, Stan Colby. We pray for healing from other sicknesses, for George Pickett, Mike Albright, Lumney Park, Ed McMeal, Andrea Green, Marjorie Violas, Lois Chick, John Scott, Denise McQuaid, Daniel Siegel, Kathy Williams, John Burtonshaw, Eunice Sterling, Scott Govert, Laura, Lori Parrish, Karen Hart, Madeline, Barbara Nielsen's brother, Jerry, Rick Tubner, Nick Copenland, Casey Covington, Susie Gilner, Joanne Colby. We pray for healing from injury for Valerie Van, Abby Geiser, Jen Kinsel, Natasha, 
We pray for solace for Pastor Brady and his family, uh, Mellison family, the Rodriguez family, the family of Gene Anderson, Denise from the loss of a father, Lloyd family, the family of Ron Albers, Tuberville family for the loss of their Aunt Marie. Comfort all that are in distress. According to your saving, will grant them relief from pain and all infirmity with you to share their troubles as you bore the cross for all. Let them find their burdens light and bearable and praise you for your care. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. These and all other prayers we pray in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And we pray together our Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And now go now as a light to the nations. Honor the Lord. Preach what you know of the risen Christ. And fulfill all righteousness. And may God strengthen you and bless you with peace. May Christ Jesus bring forth justice for you and among you. And may the Holy Spirit alight on you and affirm you as God's beloved ones. Amen. Let us sing together our next song. I have a home, eternal home, but for now I want this broken world. You walk to first, you know our pain, but you show hope and rise again up from the grave. Abide with me.
and up ahead, eternity, will we no more, will sing for joy, abide with me. Now I ask that you go in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God and have a great day as we celebrate the Epiphany.